So this is my entry, um, the, the project. So the project was for an online MBA course for uh, Bayes Business School. Um, the, the, uh, the needs for, for this MBA were at least threefold. Um, and, and this is based on the, the research about what, what online MBA students want. And this is based on market research, uh, but also general research. So the first thing is that they want something that's time optimizing, right? The online, uh, typical online MBA student is busy. Um, the vast majority work full time and have families. Um, so, so even the kind of the smallest amount of extra time that we can shave off is really important. And this is why they're doing an online degree. I remember speaking to one of the students who uh, just lived in Wimbledon. And the reason they were doing the degree was because to get to any of the business schools in London would take him at least an hour, you know, to get there and to get back. And having, having a full-time job and a family and then, and then this degree, which might be, you know, between up to 20 hours a week of study, is just not doable. So they need something that makes the best use of their time. <clears throat> Secondly, they really want something that's experience, what I would call, for lack of a better phrase, experience leveraging. Um, the average online student is 33. Um, years old and has eight years experience and they're also diverse and they want to share and learn from each other so part of their learning is is about taking and transforming and structuring what they know already and and also getting learning from from the other people in in their cohorts um, experiences as well um, or it's a bit like uh, I know Peter will know this quote, uh, Ausubel, the most important predictor of student learning is what they know already. Um, and then lastly, cha-ching, it needs to be career rewarding. Um, MBA students want to improve their performance and their firm's performance in order to increase their salaries. So uh, one of the most important reasons that people do MBAs is that, is that they want to make more money. And that's a, that's a goal for them, but it's also a goal for, it, it's also an implicit, uh, explicit for, for MBA programs. So if you look at, for example, the, the FT and the way they do rankings, one of the key criteria is, is salary increase. And, and this is so important that MBA programs will even deliberately try to game it uh, by uh, selecting students with, with low salaries because those are the best, those are the ones that they can get the biggest bump for. So, so getting, you know, basically they're, these are practical minded, time poor people. Um, so what were the constraints? What held us back? Um, first, the VLE was not suited for distance learning. That sounds like kind of an easy thing to say, and I'm not one of these bad uh, entry people who says, it wasn't engaging, it was, it was boring. <laughs> um, but, but specifically, they, we needed something that made better use of their time, and the, where, sorry, that's embarrassing. Um, the text is going below, but basically we needed to, we needed to have something that, that gave the best presentation of the learning design and would, would be able to influence them to make efficient use of their time and to um, make better study decisions. Um, there's, there's more I could say about that, but I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, the second thing is that this is a totally new thing, so it was a big big change in the organization. They were, they were used to face-to-face -to -face teaching. It was, it was very political getting it done, and there was a lot of intrigue that happened, a lot of academics having meetings and then not inviting key stakeholders to the meetings, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of tears and hurt feelings. Um, so the, the trick was to, um, you know, basically uh, identify, you know, design flaws and 
make, uh, well, I guess, the, I guess the other part of this thing is a new thing is that we didn't know what we didn't know, right? So there, there, could, be, there could be problems that we just simply didn't foresee. And so how could we increase visibility, essentially, so that, so that we could iterate further later? Um, lastly, the, uh, this is a really important sort of pedagogical limitation, is that despite the fact that the students were practical-minded people and they want things that are authentic, they want things that feel like, you know, it's, it's them at, at work, um, simply creating authentic, realistic environments does not always result in great learning because it's too much of a jump. Um, and we need to be able to, for, for the learning to work effectively and to give effective feedback, it needs to be more structured because, because often the kind of just simply making it practical results in cognitive overload. So that brings us to the design. Um, this, is, this is what we did with the VLE. This is where, this is where the whole thing started. In, in, the, in the sense of the, the beginning of the design of the project. Um, so let's see if this works. <gasps> I think it's gonna work. At Cass Business School, Project Flow was a project to redesign the aesthetics, navigation, and wayfinding of our online courses. We took it on as part of Cass's new online MSc global finance. To do this technically, we created a fork version of Moodle Rooms theme snap. To show what we've done, let's take the out-of-the-box Moodle theme clean and compare user journeys. Starting with the clean theme, I log in and I land on the dashboard page. Now I'm trying to make a plan and I want to know what to do next. What I get is a number of suggestions about where to go and what to do, perhaps too many. I'm getting text and graphic elements all competing for my attention. Should I even land on a page like this? I'll go to my course, which is where I wanted to go anyway. As I land on the course page, I'm again getting a lot of elements competing for my attention. Navigation, activities, in fact every activity in the course, extra site links, a form search block, upcoming events and recent activity. Which one should I choose? I can see that I'm on the fourth week, but still, I have to find this among a list of other sections and activities. Where shall I start? Let's contrast this with the cast version of SNAP. Here, I log in, and I land straight on my current course in my current section. Now, if I want to get some dashboard information, I can get it from the Moodle Rooms dashboard. But I start with my current course in my current week. Where should I start? Well, here it's pretty clear. I can still skip ahead, but visually, I have a strong indication of where to go. Now, let's go back to the clean theme and look at the navigation process once we go to an activity. I'm going to choose the first activity for the current week, although I might have just as easily picked anything else. I can see that I'm meant to watch the video and post a response, sharing my experience. Again, here are all the elements competing for my attention. Now I've posted, but have I completed the activity? It says that's what I needed to do, but there's nothing to indicate that I've finished it. Now I can return to the course page, or actually, I have the navigation to go anywhere from here, which is pretty distracting when I'm trying to complete the activity. At the course page now, I can see I've completed the activity. Let's contrast this with the CAS version of SNAP. Here, I can see that the activity has become focused, and all the information on the page is about the activity. This activity looks different than other activities because it's the first. It has a stronger header, and the text starts with this red drop cap. The only navigation I can see is a cleaned up breadcrumb, which fades the title into the breadcrumb when it scrolls above the fold. I post something in the discussion, and I get, first, a notification that I've completed the activity, and second, a prompt to move on to the next activity. Whilst I completed the activity, this theme has kept me from getting distracted by too much navigation and general clutter, but now that I'm done, 
It's giving me a simple piece of feedback and a link suggesting where I can move on. Let's look at some other activities. A choice. A quiz. A feedback survey. A page. Our hope was to make the student experience feel more connected, more guided, and more of a designed, integrated whole. So that was the VLE design, which was the first six months of the project, was me sitting with a, a developer, uh, working very closely to, to design this. Uh, there's a lot that I could say, sorry, I'm not using the microphone. There's a lot that I could say about the, the thinking behind the design of the VLE, but I, I think kind of two big main ideas, may, okay, maybe three. The, the first is just simply cognitive load and, and minimalism. So there's, there's a lot of research to, to suggest that people, are, people perform better and um, are, are more attracted to minimalistic environments. And m you know, my feeling is most LMSs, most VLEs have a long way to go in terms of subtracting out elements and, and simplifying. Um, the second sort of complementary idea is that is that this isn't it, it's minimalism not just in terms of aesthetics, but minimalism in terms of navigation and decision making. So many of you will be aware that in the uh, working memory, you know, we have uh, two channels, right? There's a visual channel and there's a, a a semantic channel, but there's also an executive function in in the working memory too, and and so this and so when people get overloaded, it's, it's not just hard to process things, it's actually harder to make decisions. And, and so part of the, the goal with the VLE was actually to make the, the decision-making process easier. That's why if you've ever heard of the jam jar study, you know, the, um, by Shirley Ayengar, they did this study where they um, were like having, they were giving away free samples of jam. And one, they had three jars of jam, and then the other, they had like 10. And what they found, was that people would, everybody would sample the jam at both tables, but people at, at, the, at the table with three jars were more likely to buy. And the reason why is because when it came to the point of making the decision, you know, trying to sort through 10 different options was, was just too, too much for people. And so similarly, if you want people to engage, you need to actually give them fewer options. And then the, the, the third thing, is, is this idea about trying to represent the learning design. So having something where when they look on the page, what the, what the page looks like gives them a picture of what the, the learning design actually is. And I don't know if I achieved that or not, but that was, that was basically the, the idea. So anyway, that's the VLE. Let's see if I can get to the next page. I'm so pleased that the video actually worked. Um, so next is the actual kind of the big meat bit of the learning design, which is the weekly lesson sequence. So first, we have what I would call a hook, which is a short uh, one to one and a half minute piece to camera video of the academic introducing the, the, the lesson for the week. The emphasis here is not on summarizing the content, but on usually telling a story and then explaining why the topic is important. So it should be like a good a trailer to a good movie, you know, like you shouldn't, a bad trailer to a movie is like, okay, I just watched the whole movie, you know, like I already, you know, I kind of know what's gonna happen now. Um, it should be, it should sort of have enough to just draw the person in and then have some sort of a, a warm up activity like a discussion. The next is a, an interactive video lecture. What I mean by that is, usually about 10 to 15 minutes of, of video lecture content coupled with a quiz. Next is a case discussion. Um, this would comprise a, uh, a case study and then actually a, a, a few kind of basic essay quiz questions, one or two quiz questions or or automated questions about the nature of the quiz, and then an, um, 
an online discussion about the case. And, um, and I, I should say, in MBAs, case studies are sort of the, the standard way of teaching. And so this was part of the, whatever, pedagogical paradigm of the MBA. Oh, sorry. The next is a self-check. These are uh, slightly boilerplate questions about uh, how, you know, in a Likert scale, you know, one to five, how well do you feel you understood the content? And then um, what, and then a kind of a, a open field question, what did you, what did you struggle to understand? And if you understood, you know, you feel you understood everything, what was particularly valuable? And then a, uh, the review and case discussion, which would be a synchronous session, which would be done in Zoom, where they would, they would review everything. And then, and then lastly, a review quiz, which would review not just what was done in that week, but everything so far in, in the, that module. So that, it's just six elements, relatively simple, but allowed me to do a lot. So first, um, it allowed me to pack in a, a huge amount of evidence-based practice. So um, first, in the hook, I'm doing the Ausubel thing, engaging prior learning. I'm doing a bit of the elaboration theory, starting with something very simple, and then, and then we're building out, like Raguluz talks about. Um, in the interactive video lecture, I'm, of course, drawing on, on Meyer and multimedia theory of cognitive load. But I'm also trying to tap into what's called the forward testing effect by coupling it with uh, quiz questions. So this person, Spoonar and, and others, um, did some research around what happens when you couple uh, videos with quizzes. And, and what they found was that compared to just showing videos on their own, uh, attention doubled, so, which was re uh, recorded in reports of mind wandering. So mind wandering decreased by half. And, and then also people's performance on tests doubled in a kind of immediate follow-up quiz. Um, and then, so, so that was done, actually the, the performance on the quiz was done on a, an example where basically the, the people, it was, it was a quiz where basically they hadn't, neither group had seen the quiz before, so they're not just benefiting from taking the quiz. What it's showing is that, is that how, getting used to this pattern of having a quiz coupled with a video trains people to pay more attention when, when the video is playing. Um, and, then, and then it also plays on one hopes, variation theory, which is a theory about examples that, that basically, which is something I really tried to push, is that when you have, when you tell something to someone, that's good, but actually what's better is you tell someone, someone, then you give them an example, and then you give them another example, and you try to vary it, show it from different angles, and, and this is kind of what results in, in deeper, better learning. Um, also drawing on the problem of transfer and Thorndike. I'll try to get through these quickly. I've got a lot of them. Um, complex learning in Marion Bauer, uh, elaboration theory. Um, in the self-check, this is, I'm trying to do a metacognition thing. It's, it's drawing on Mazur's work. It's in many ways just a copy of Eric Mazur, who uh, teaches uh, physics at Harvard. Some of you may know him. Um, and then again, in the review and case discussion, elaboration theory, cold calling, active feedback, video feedback. And, uh, and then the retrieval practice, uh, the Rodiger Borg, and then this is using what is called interleaving in space practice, which is that basically when you, uh, interleaving is like mixing basically, you know, lesson A with lesson B with lesson C and then space practice is self-explanatory. Now the other thing is, is that in doing this, there's all kinds of layers of feedback. So in each of these, what's, what's cool is that in each of these, the student sees something, they do something, and then there's some kind of a bit of feedback involved. So in the hook, should I get this to work? Okay. There's, a, there's the hook from the, the social element of participating in the discussion. Um, 
in the uh, interactive video lecture, they get the feedback from the quiz. In the case discussion, they're getting peer feedback again. In the self-check, they're, they're giving self-feedback. In the review and case discussion, um, they're, they're getting feedback from the teacher and from each other, but for everything that they've done in that week. Um, and then the review quiz, they're getting feedback for everything they've done in the whole module, right? And then, and then in the hook, that, that arrow should have gone first. Apologies. But this is an example of what uh, John Hattie would call feeding forward. So it's because it's giving a picture of what you should be aiming to do, the, the criteria by which you should be judging yourself. Um, so the part of what to say about the design, too, that I'm proud of is that, is that part of the, the aspect of the design, by creating active learning, with, with feedback, it also creates better visibility. So I mentioned that the reflection uses a Likert scale. So in every week, we ask them, like, how well do you feel you understood the material? And then this is all of, uh, or nearly all of the, the different modules broken into, uh, you know, measured like week by week. And so this, this strong line is the average. And so we, you know, if something is really low, like operations in, in the fourth uh, go and uh, second taught week, we kind of look at that and say, okay, what went wrong there? You know, what can we fix? And this leads our, our design process. Um, okay, so quick aside, writing skills. Um, I've done a fair bit of writing. Uh, some of the blogs I've written for, I used to do book reviews for eLearning Age. I've written about events for the Association for Learning Technology. I wrote a, a kind of a speculative piece for the learning scientists where I kind of proposed a design approach based on the book that they wrote. I really recommend their book if, if you don't know it. They provide in their book the kind of six most well-evidenced learning interventions that you know, are, are evidenced both by, um, uh, by uh, cognitive science and by the kind of more educational literature. And I said, okay, here's how you could put these six interventions together into a learning design. Um, and I've written my own stuff for Medium. I've written about books that instructional designers should read and uh, about wayfinding and instructional design. And I've also written for The Guardian the FT, I wrote something with the Dean of the Business School. Um, also with the Dean of the Business School, I wrote for Times Higher Ed. And I wrote a report for the CIPD, which was used for a report. And uh, my former boss, Sam, said, this is sort of embarrassing doing these things. Are you just talking about yourself the whole time? But anyway, Sam is a really lovely chap. And uh, he wrote, clear, insightful, and practical advice from Leonard Houck's lightly worn knowledge in clean spare prose makes complex things simple and achievable. You have to imagine it with like a sort of an Oxford accent, you know, but, um, but there you go. Um, originality and innovation. What was original and innovative about what I did? Well, the, the LMS, I, I've said a bit about it already. I, the idea was simplifying learner navigation through design practices from social media and e-commerce. So, uh, you know, the, to give you an example, I don't want to get too far into depth, but, but one of the patterns I borrowed from is called tunneling. So if you go into Amazon, when you, when you buy something on Amazon, um, the closer you get to a purchase, the, the fewer elements you see on the page because they want you to complete that purchase. They don't want you to change your mind, you know, once, once you're in and go, oh yeah, well, there was that other book I should get there. Like, no, 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 you press pay. Um, so that's called tunneling. Um, and so there were a number of these sort of UX design patterns I borrowed from, from other fields to do the LMS, um, what, which is actually my second point here I just made. Um, so it did, did actually, was received as innovative. So. LMS Pulse did a write-up about the, the theme and, and called it revolutionary. And the Moodle, Moodle HQ staff hailed the work as done by a person of vision. I love that. Um, 
and uh, and then and then my I, I, some of my ideas were then adopted in, into the core code and, and into some of the um, uh, partner theme versions. Um, the activity sequence, what was innovative about that? Well, I, I think part of what I, I felt that I did was trying to do the kind of Rigoluth simple to complex thing while bringing in some of the like more more recent um, developments in, in educational research. Um, I, the other thing is really just ensuring every single element as a rule had interactivity and feedback. And the, some of the ideas were adopted by Wiley, uh, City University School of Mathematics, University of Falmouth, and Cambridge Education Group, where I work now. Um, and then the last thing is the, the learner analytics innovation, which is around, oh, sorry, second to last thing, which is around taking a holistic evidence-informed approach to the design, um, starting from the research evidence and then, then moving to the learning design with all elements sort of mutually imbricated. So this kind of gives a picture of the design process where it's not like I just did an activity sequence and then that was it. But actually, the kind of the, the logic of the activity sequence is in the VLE, which then is also not just not just um, I guess like giving learner data, but actually is giving richer learner data. So part of the reason the learner data is good to start with is because of the learning design and the VLE, and um, and then this in turn is then informing the others and, and so forth. Um, and then, and then the last thing is, is uh, last innovation is I uh, co-organized a, a reading group, an e-learning uh, research reading group in London. We've done about 40 sessions, um, and this is one of the posters I did for it. Uh, communication, I'm almost done. Um, here's some kind of cringy, embarrassing quotes about how nice of a guy I am. And I, I think it says more probably about how lovely the people I worked with are than says anything about me. Dimi is, is a really great guy. Um, and then this is Richard Payne, uh, Assistant uh, Dean of Teaching and Learning. Also, um, really, really lovely chap. Um, now, the last, last bit, quality and effectiveness. Um, the engagement level was very high. This is completion for non-graded, non-required activities. I don't have anything to benchmark against that, but it's far higher than I was expecting. If you ask the academics, they would have expected nothing to be completed. So this is, this is really good uh, compared to that. Um, but here I do actually have some benchmarks. So the, the retention rate is really, really good. So we, this is the UK postgraduate. Uh, rate for part-time students. Um, as you can see, the, um, the rate of non-continuation is around 30%. Um, for us, it was around 3%. Um, so this is a quote from one of our students. It's not easy, but if you want it, you will put the work in, and I promise you will love it. You know, as I understand, we've had no one drop off our course and we've been doing it since September. Uh, satisfaction rates were also really good. Um, it, from a statistical perspective, it would be great to like show you the variance on this because um, there's not a lot of movement on these numbers typically. And so uh, you can see like for post-grad, um, it's 4.1, for Bayes, it's 4.2. And for us, it's 4.35, which is, a, is actually a quite significant amount of m movement. Um, and the grades were significantly higher. Um, and this is my last slide. So these are all the other MBA programs. And, and here you can see that, as I was talking about before, that boop, like where, you know, here, here they're all up here. And then um, ours in, in the middle is, is just that bit. Higher. So, and then in closing, we have a quote from another student. Um, it's given me such a huge confident boost. Not coming from an academic background, but coming directly from a professional background and knowing that I can do it is amazing.
because that was a doubt I had a year ago. So, massive confidence boost. That's, that's it. That's, that's me. Thank you. Thank you.